Hey there, it's Dr. Peebler again. We're going to be talking about some other things we can do to metabolically reprogram cancer. We have been talking quite a bit about how hypoxia-inducible factor one, two, and three are intimately intertwined in the biochemical milieu and metabolism central to the Warburg effect. So I think it's time to talk about high-dose IV vitamin C. So in this paper, it talks about how high dose IV vitamin C is a very powerful tool that alternative practitioners have in the treatment of cancer. A lot of these clinics and medical centers that are using vitamin C are not using it in the way that it's described in the literature. It has to be high dose vitamin C. And we're going to talk about high dose vitamin C in the future when it comes to all of the ways that it affects cancer cell growth. Okay. There are multiple mechanisms, as you can see here in this graphic, where vitamin C has a positive effect on cancer. But what we're going to be talking about because of the current theme of the series is how vitamin C is related to HIF-1 destabilization. So ascorbic acid or vitamin C is actually a cofactor for the hypoxia-inducible factor hydroxylases. That would be the PDH and the FIH enzymes. So when there is a deficiency in vitamin C or ascorbic acid, that will automatically stabilize HIF, which allows for hypoxia inducible genes to be upregulated and transcribed. However, when ascorbic acid is given, it has the ability to destabilize HIF, which allows it to be degraded and to block its actions, which as we know, propagate the Warburg effect. So what it's saying here is high dose ascorbic acid treatment in tumor tissues with normoxic HIF-1 stabilization. So what this is saying is under hypoxia, true hypoxia, where you know I'm drowning, I have a lack of oxygen, high dose ascorbic acid or high dose vitamin C will probably not have near the same effect. But under normal oxygen conditions, which is seen in cancer, it's able to disrupt the normoxic HIF-1 alpha stabilization, can potentially increase PDH and FIH activity to degrade HIF-1 protein and slow down tumor growth. In conditions where ascorbate is depleted, such as in certain cancer types or tumor tissue in gulo negative mice, the activity of PDH and FIH is reduced even when oxygen is available, which is saying that it's going to be upregulating HIF alpha even if oxygen is present under a, no, a non cancer condition. So if you're just, if you are deficient in vitamin C or ascorbic acid, this is setting you up for problems down the line, which leads to stabilization and activation of HIF1 alpha and its translocation to the nucleus. HIF1 alpha associates with HIF1 beta, P300, and other cofactors within the nucleus to induce target genes such as GLUT1, a glucose transporter that would upregulate glucose entry into the cell, which can feed forward the Warburg effect, which together might promote tumor growth. In fact, in this paper, ascorbic acid and ascorbate 2 phosphate decrease HIF activity and malignant properties in human melanoma cells. As you can see in this graph, we're seeing that the control, which doesn't have high dose ascorbic acid, they're at 100%. And when you actually add high dose vitamin C, you can see the tumor size is cut in half. As it says in this conclusion, these studies suggested a positive role for ascorbic acid in regulating HIF1 alpha in melanoma by demonstrating that supplementation with either ascorbic acid or its oxidation resistant analog ascorbate 2 phosphate effectively reduces HIF-1 alpha protein and transcriptional activity in metastatic melanoma cells. Our data, while supporting the function of ascorbic acid as necessary cofactor for PDH and likely FIH activity, also suggests a potential non-PDH FIH role for ascorbic acid in HIF-1 regulation by its continued ability to reduce HIF-1 in the presence of PDH inhibition. That's interesting. So what they're saying is, even though it's a cofactor for these PhD and FIH enzymes, which destabilize HIF, they've actually found a non-PHD role in degrading HIF because they've actually put in PDHD inhibitors at the same time as ascorbic acid, and it still has a HIF-1 regulating effect. The use of the oxidation-resistant ascorbic acid analog, A2P, to reduce the ability of HIF-1 to promote malignant progression in melanoma cells and enhance their response to therapy warrants further investigation. So this is interesting. This is talking about 
how in thyroid cancer, there's an inverse relationship between the amount of ascorbic acid or vitamin C present in the cancer cells and the amount of HIF-1 that is either stabilized or destabilized. So as it says here, we found an inverse correlation between vitamin C level and HIF-1 alpha, but not HIF-2 alpha expression in thyroid lesions. These results agree with our in vitro study showing that vitamin C induced a dose-dependent decrease in HIF-1 alpha, but not HIF-2 alpha protein level in thyroid cancer cells. The decrease in HIF-1 expression was correlated with reduced expression of hypoxia-related glucose transporter 1 and thyroid cancer cells. So as you can see, the high-dose ascorbic acid is what's necessary, which would have to be given by IV in order to have this process help. Now, there are other, in fact, there are several other mechanisms of how IV high-dose vitamin C can help kill cancer. As a matter of fact, I would say this is even probably a secondary or tertiary way that it helps. And we'll talk about the other ways after we get through a little bit of the mitochondrial redox portion of this, because it's kind of make a lot more sense when we start talking about specific reactive species that are created by high dose ascorbic acid, which acts as a way to imbalance their redox state and ultimately lead to cancer's demise. If you like these videos, like, share, and subscribe, because this kind of information is important for those with cancer and those who have family and friends who have cancer and to help get the message out, I would much appreciate it. Until next time.